Well, two days ago, protesters amassed outside a McDonald's shareholder meeting in Chicago. They demanded the company start paying its roughly 850,000 workers in the United States a $15 minimum wage. Do the protesters really want to get their wish? What would happen if they did? Working at McDonald's is not that complicated. So would a $15 wage drive further automation and lead to mass layoffs? No one really knows, but that's a concern. And we brought up recently with former Dirty Jobs host Mike Rowe. Here's his view. Mike Rowe, thanks for joining us. I wouldn't miss it. So, so protesters have gathered outside McDonald's across the country demanding higher wages. Huh. And so on the one hand, of course, I'm always sympathetic to people who want to get paid more, for sure, sure especially for jobs that are hard and long. On the other hand, at what point does McDonald's decide we're replacing you with automation, with robots? Probably this point, or probably soon. I don't have a crystal ball, but I mean, everybody I've talked to is going back and again and again and again to the, uh, well, they call it the threat of automation. And, right. and like the headlines that I'm seeing are how computers are going to, uh, to steal our jobs. And I, I don't really know that it makes sense to anthropomorphize it. Quite, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't <laughs> right. think the computers are you know, going around like twirling their mustache and laughing maniacally. But um, it's going to happen. I mean, yeah. it's going to happen just as surely as, as the Internet messed up the TV and the TV messed up cinema and cinema disrupted radio and radio messed up the newspapers and Kindle screwed up the booksellers and so it goes. But I don't think it's anything to, to panic over. It's going to happen. But as it relates to the minimum wage conversation and as it relates to labor and management, the only thing I can add to it is that with my foundation, we try and remind people that learning a skill that's actually in demand negates the whole conversation. If you can weld, if, you can, if you're a plumber, if you're an electrician, if, if you're willing to learn a skill that has a pre-existing demand, then you don't have to constantly negotiate and talk about a few extra dollars in order to stay in a position that, frankly, I, I don't know how you advance in that kind of thinking. That's right. Right. So, so our philosophy is pretty simple. Um, if you have a skill and that skill is in demand, you can work where you want and you can write your own ticket. If you don't, you're going to have to hope the next negotiation works out and the next minimum wage position falls favorably in your direction, which strikes me as fatalistic. That's such a common sense point. Oh, it's I can't just, help it. I can't, well, <laughs> I, I can't help it. I'm just. But it makes inherent and unassailable sense. So why aren't our schools encouraging some percentage of kids to do the same thing? As we've discussed before, I think we've got it in our heads that there's a category of good jobs and bad jobs, that there's a category of good education and bad education. We don't call it that. We call it higher education an alternative education. Right. But look, it's fun with the language, right? And the minute you categorize an entire uh, vertical of education as alternative, you might as well call it subordinate. So the message starts early on. If you go to a trade school, you're going to have to settle for a second class job or some kind of vocational consolation prize. And so parents don't want that for their kids. Guidance counselors don't want that for their schools. So all of these opportunities that today constitute 5.6 million available jobs, open jobs, that are sitting there. They don't get any press and they don't get any love because somewhere back in the reptilian part of our brain, we believe they're substandard. That's dumb. But, but they pay well. That, what I'm confused by is so many young people wind up in what they're calling the sharing economy, <laughs> where a few billionaires in Silicon Valley exploit them for nothing, right. basically. So you rent your apartment on Airbnb, drive a car for Uber. These are jobs that pay many times that, right? Or am I missing it? Well, look, I mean, it's, it's hard. It's tempting to take a cookie cutter approach to everything of and, course. Put, and put every job. What's a news anchor get? Uh, it kind of depends. You into Des Moines, depends, for right? sure. Well, same thing with welding. You know, if you got your certificate to weld and you're in Oklahoma, you might start at 45 grand a year. A year later, you might be in Western uh, North Dakota making 120 grand, or in the Gulf doing better than that. The skill goes where you go. And this is another thing schools don't teach. If you have a skill that's in demand, it's, it's innate in you. Whatever right. talent. It's portable. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's inherently mobile. It's not, you, you don't have to go to the McDonald's with respect, right? I mean, you don't have to go to the retailer and stand behind the counter and wait for the business to come. You can, you can, no one talks about the path to small businesses that trades represent. They just don't talk about it. But... On my old show, I can't tell you how many people I ran into who had a small business 
who had employees, who had multiple trucks, but started with a skill. So my thing with the minimum wage and with automation and with all of it is that anything we do that knocks the bottom rungs off of the ladder that we all must surely climb yes, for sure. is self-defeating. So if getting to 15 bucks an hour hastens automation and therefore eliminates thousands of opportunities for kids who, by the way, are not just learning how to flip a burger, but how to tuck their shirt in, of course. how to show up on time. All this basic stuff. I mean, how else do you learn that except by being uh, in your first or second job? We're going to arbitrage logic right out of the equation and then R2-D2, take a bow. <laughs> That's not bad. Add the special sign. It's very good. It's very good. And by the way, you're not reading anything. I can just assure our viewers that was. No, well, well I can't read, tragically. <laughs> and this is something we should talk about in the we future. We should. That's right. Literacy. Micro, it's always great to see you. Likewise.